Welcome back, everybody, to Dr. Sowers Educate. We're so happy that you're back as you continue on your journey, either towards certification for the first time or towards renewing your certification. We just launched a new curriculum that does help those of us that are on our journey to renew our certification. This is a new offering in response to a lot of requests that we have received over the past couple of years, and we have finally released that curriculum to you. If you're curious about that, just take a look in our description right here in this episode and you will find all the details that you'll need to know in order to identify that information on our platform, okay? You can always head over to our website, which is drsellerseducate.com, and that's where you will see a list of all of the programs that we offer to support you on your journey. In this episode, we are continuing on our series of looking at learning theory, the who, the what, and the how. We always like to refer to our primary resource document, which is Billings and Halstead, Teaching and Nursing a God for Faculty. This is the sixth edition. Okay, so if you haven't purchased it, we highly encourage you to do that, whether you are on the initial certification journey or renewing your certification. This is just a great resource to always have as your guide to help us better understand some of these key teaching strategies that we're talking about as part of our weekly series. We do launch a new episode every single week right here on our channel. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already to ensure you're notified right away whenever a new episode is released. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our, our content for our snapshot in this series. We are specifically looking at the constructivist learning theory. Chapter 14 in Billings and Halstead is gonna help provide more context to the content that you will need to review to close your knowledge gaps. We are specifically focusing on the who, the what, and the how related to these very important category of learning um, that we are exploring, which is learning theory. We know it's a broad category. That's why we're breaking it down in a way for you to understand how to apply these concepts and what are the teaching strategies, how are they aligned with the various competencies. So let's go ahead and take a look at our practice test question. Constructivist learning theory emphasizes learning as an active process. Which teaching strategy is going to best align with this theory? Okay, we have four choices, team-based activities, peer-to-peer -peer teaching, simulation debriefings, or clinical post-conferences. So just think about in this question, what is it asking? And second of all, what is it that I know about constructivist learning theory? Okay, so let's start with talking about the what. What are the key elements that I want to consider and how are they aligned? First, you want to take a look at chapter 14, as we mentioned, aligning with learning theory that maps back to competency one and competency two for C&E and C&E and C and e novice. And then for C&E clinical, it maps back to three competencies, okay? And the constructivist learning theory, that specific category really does look at students or learners' prior experiences and how they bring those experiences into the learning environment and making sense of how to connect the practice and the decisions that they're making with the constructs or the understanding of cognitive information that they wanna break down. Okay, so now let's talk about the how and the who, and hopefully that will bring it all together for you. This specific theory emphasizes the role of interactions with others. One example is going to be problem-based learning. This is a primary tool that was used in John Dewey's work. Problem-based learning actually encourages students to look at real-world real situations. So taking those experiential learning experiences that they have firsthand accounts about, the knowledge that they're able to gain from those firsthand experiences, and then they build on those skills and the learning that they develop over time. Okay, so one key element related to constructivist learning theory and Dewey's work is that learning takes time and experiences. If you chose A, team-based activities as the best choice for our practice question, you are correct. Okay, if you want further review of content, you will go back to page 249 in Billings and Halstead on table 14.1. That's where you're going to see more of the concepts described related to constructivist learning theory and some of those other teaching strategies that you want to make sure you fully understand. This has been another snapshot in our learning 
Theory series, and we are excited as you continue on your journey. Feel free to reach out if you have questions, and we will see you in the next snapshot. Have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.